Well, good evening there. It's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixie Belle content creator, and I am always happy to be here. Tonight, we're going to be working on transfers. If you know someone who really enjoys working with transfers or would like to learn more about transfers, definitely let them know we're on right now. We're going to have some fun with some transfers tonight using the uh, Cherry Blossom transfer. We have a lot to do, and I'm going to get as much done as I can tonight, and I'm pretty excited about showing you what I'm up to. Tonight, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to show off a little bit. I am actually a graphic design designer by trade. So I'm a, I used some of my skills and software to help me compose my design. And I want to show you that because it's going to be my guide tonight for doing this piece. Are you guys up for that? Uh, so again, unless you're using Photoshop, uh, I'm not really trying to show you how to use Photoshop. I'm showing you how I accomplish my layout, but I think there's a few tools you can use uh, for your software, maybe something like Snapseed, and there's, there's maybe some other things, but just the concept. I just had so many moving parts, I really needed to lay this out. Uh, and let me just showcase real quick. This is Dixie Bell's Cherry Blossom Transfer, and on the back, you'll see that there's four sheets and there's different types of illustrations of cherry blossoms. So I'm using this set right here. These, there's six pieces. And then I'm gonna also use the, the black and white illustration version. But there's different varieties on this sheet. And I actually had three containers. So I grabbed all of the same type of illustration from the three containers. And I'm gonna use almost all of it. So that you can imagine if you take six times three, you know, the, do the math, that starts adding up. Um, last time I did a transfer, I think it was the Magnolia transfer, and we actually composed it live together. Tonight I wanted to go ahead and get that part done because there's a lot of pieces. Um, and I actually even, I took them all out and I paper clipped them and numbered them so I knew which one was going to map go up to my map. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this... This makes so you'll see here, this is the dresser. It's to my right. It's painted mostly to, it took me three coats. Remember, um, if you don't know, pink champagne is a very light color. It's almost like white with a tint of red. I mean, it's so light. So usually when you're painting things like fluff and cotton, you're, and you're painting it over a dark color, you're oftentimes faced with two to three coats because it's a lighter, it takes a little bit more. So most of the dresser is painted all the drawers have three coats but the cabinet itself needs another coat i'm not going to do that tonight um good to see judy in here again tonight thank you so much for watching so this is the uh i'm showing you my photoshop file right now so i took this picture i think last night so it might not be quite as pink as it it um it would be when it's done but i used the shell in my design um this is the the actual transfer file I just took offline so I could come in there and start literally cutting it up in my Photoshop program. So this is all the pieces that come with the transfer. So that's my master document. Um, I also created a layer that I can use. Do you see the difference there with the shading? If I have, if I get to it and I want to do, I think I really want to do it. I'm going to be using soft pink to shade the inside of the drawers and you can see the soft pink there. So I just turned that layer on that I turned that I made. And then this is um, one of the things I had to do. I don't want to get too far in, into this, but I had to get the scale right so that. Um, so I took a picture of my dresser with one of the transfers taped to it so I can get the scale right. If not, the Photoshop work would have been silly. So here's the uh, finished look that I composed in Photoshop. Of all, So I'm using almost all of the pieces I just talked about. And in my layer, in my Photoshop file, um, I have all of the numbers. So I, I know how many number ones, number twos, number threes, and so on. So you can imagine if I, I, and I forget how many layers I have in here, but there's quite a few. Also pay attention closely and you'll see that there is also the black and white kind of hinted in there. So like I said, I could have just winged this, but it would almost taken us an hour just to figure out and this was a quick way for me with my skills and my software to, but you could easily do, well, easily. There are other software, like I th I'm pretty sure we can, you can fudge this, but even if you didn't, like I actually masked it out so it fit on the drawers. 
Um, for example, if I didn't mask the drawers, it would look something like that. I didn't really want it to go out. And you can imagine how hard it is to go, to go over all those ridges. So I think this looks really lovely. And you can see the shading is there. The shading may be optional. We'll see if we get time for that. I've got the pieces. If we get to the end of uh, the live tonight and it's getting kind of redundant, I might see the shading. Just keep in mind, when I say shading, I'm going to be using chalk paint. And it's not necessarily ideal to be using wet or water with transfers, but you use such little amount of water. It, um, I did it on the previous piece. It worked out really good. So I'll try and show that if we have time. Um, so anyways, that's the Photoshop work. I have to keep this up or I'm going to lose track of what I need to do. In fact, I think this is the first time that I'm going to be wearing my glasses so I can read the numbers. If I don't have my glasses, I can't read the layers on there. So I need to know what numbers what. And uh, so I'll be referencing this document tonight. So, but again, you won't see the dresser. This is a photo, but that's what I'm working on. If you're not following me on social media, definitely do that because I'll, I'll be posting finished result pictures. Also the chalk mineral paint enthusiast group. I like to post results there. So as I get this thing done, I may do some shading uh, in other places, maybe around the feet and stuff like that, but I didn't really need, feel like I needed to mock that up in Photoshop. So that, that is my, uh, my plan tonight. So if you guys are ready to go, we're going to, this is the first, this is the bottom left drawer. And you can see that I already did the step that's in the photo. So that is two number, I forget the number, two number ones in a black. Um, but without that, that guide, guide I just showed you, I wouldn't know which pieces to use. And so now it's going to make my creation a lot simpler overall. And this, this to me, it makes it easier than taping 45 transfers onto a dresser and hoping it works out. But it's just, remember, it's just a guide. It's not, it's not the law. Um, but um, if we go back to my reference, and again, we're gonna be jumping back and forth here. So you can see the bottom left drawer um, that I just showed you. This right here, you notice it's, it looks like it's an eight drawer dresser, but it's actually six, the bottom drawer is two. So the next one I need to do is this panel here. And uh, so what I need, what I will do then is I will go back to my, my layer over here and I will click on it in my software and I'm gonna say, okay, what number is that layer? So I am working on a number two. You can see I'm turning the layer on and off. Let's turn off the black and white one. The black and white one is just uh, an optional. So that's a three. Just to give you an idea, um, first of all, I have my Lazy Susan here that is really great. I have on the in the back, I'm gonna keep all the little pieces because I might need a bud or a stem. So I'm gonna keep all those as much as possible together. And there will be a times where I'll have scrap again, where I've already used the top. I can come back and use these. Some of these might come out really nice, maybe on the side of the dresser. So I'm just gonna keep all my scraps. There's also these little buds that come with the black and white. I may or may not use those. I, haven't, I didn't put those into my mock-up. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a foundation of where I'm at with this project. I know it's a little bit of a complicated heads up. But here's an example of my pile. Got to find where my camera is. So I just did a number two and then I just paper clipped it so I can keep these straight. So as long as I use my Photoshop layers to tell me what number I should be doing, um, the madness won't be so crazy. That's, that's what I'm hoping. So we're working on a number four. So I'm going to grab a number four from my pile. It's like paint by number, right? Two things I have, I have a pair of scissors see if my uh, if my camera should be good. Pair of scissors, I also have a sharp X-Acto knife. Those are helping me with cutting. And then I have the uh, paper cutter in the back. What I don't have to do is be super precise. I just need a general guide of what I want. What I did earlier is I took my knife. I'm just gonna move a light real quick. Like I said, a lot of moving parts tonight. I think that'll help. And I just made a mark on here where I need to use my paper cutter. So two straight lines. And then I'm going over to my paper cutter and I'm cutting a straight line. The reason I'm doing that is because then I can come and it's a straight line up against my dresser. But I'm going to cut off any of this white excess so it doesn't lift over any ridges. So just a little bit of trimming, cleaning up. 
Dixie Bell's transfers stick so well, but you can if you can remove anything that's gonna get in the way of it laying down nice, I would do that. All right, so first thing we're doing is just laying it down. What I would say is my general process when doing transfers is rub it down twice and then begin to peel away. That way you know, so I'm, I would consider what I'm doing right now the second pass. So two passes and then see where you are. Okay, that doesn't mean it's perfect the first time. It just means that at, after the second pass, you're probably gonna be able to start lifting it off. Just keep in mind, I usually lift slowly, observing whether or not something is not coming up. So you, you should be able to move fairly quickly. I've done several transfers on Dixie Bell's Facebook page, so you can always go back to the, if you go to Facebook, Dixie Bell's Facebook page in the video section and search for Aaron, you will see that I've probably done three or four in the last, this year some large and let me clarify by the way why I use Photoshop or why I use software this transfer set is is pieces it's not a one solid scene so you get to compose your scene however you want and it was the same concept I did on the one I used with the Magnolia transfer so but the Magnolia transfer I didn't use as many pieces like I said I'm using a couple dozen layers at least. So just pull that off. I am going to go back in just a minute and give it one last um, courtesy. Almost done. Okay. The next thing I would recommend you do is have one of these sanding sponges and just let it help you do the final wipe down, however you want to describe this. Burnishing. So that's another way. Sometimes it just keeps you keep from keeping your oily hands off of it, but that's an option to consider. Okay, I have not sealed this. I will top coat it over the transfer. All right, next I need to find out what the next color, is, next number is, and it looks like I'm doing number three. So let me grab a number three. Going back to my three pile. And I'm gonna take the back one so I don't have to mess up my sticky note. And we're looking at something like yeah, we're looking at something like this, where it's leaning towards the hardware. The hardware's really pretty, typical French Provencial. So sometimes you might want to put your hardware down just to see where the flower might go. You know, do you want the flower behind the hardware or into? And I think it'd be nice to stop it a little short. So like I did a while ago, I'm going to make a mark where my flat straight edge is. You could probably do this with the marker if you're not marking, but my, there we go. Looking at the piece, I don't really have anything getting in the way like up at the top, so I don't need to trim it. We'll take the back off. You can see, like I said, two passes. And right now I'm just doing the final rub release. I probably rub it a little bit more than necessary, but that's what works for me. I'm gathering a little bit of extra trash here. I try to be tidy because my brain starts getting a little bit. So you guys like that when you, you start having a little too much going on, you're a little fl not flustered but just hard to keep things straight okay so just a little rub there so number two is pretty much like this keep in mind that 
as I mentioned before, it's just a, it's just a guide. Notice that if I do this, this stem is too low. So what I might do, and let's do it now, is I'm going to cut this one stem off and just aim for the concept. So what I want to do is I want to put this, let's put a couple straight cuts here. I like it when the transfers cut off a little bit. So we're going to just tap that right in there. Okay. Throw off the back. Just tap it right in there. There's something about layering. I really love to layer pieces. So you, one of the things I'm stressing right now, if you guys haven't thought about it, is that <clears throat> I am putting a transfer over a transfer. So I'm letting you know that you can do that. You know, you don't have to wait for it to dry or cure. You don't have to top coat between. Just, just be careful. Make sure that first one is down well and you'll be fine. So. But as you can imagine for this project, changing back subjects to this, I, I have several drawers to do. I'm not necessarily expecting to get them all done tonight on our live, but I wanted you to see how I'm going about getting this done because when you see it all complete and looking fantastic, I hope you'll understand how I got there. Okay, so this drawer, if we go back to my template, let's take a look. You will see there, we just finished the, that bottom left drawer. So we are on point. Okay. Colors may not be exact, but let me get the next drawer. And if you have any questions, like I said, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments. I'm kind of taking a peek once in a while, but with my nose and the project, it's a little harder to follow. But I always like going back to see those comments. While I get the next drawer, don't forget if you're not um, following me on Instagram, Facebook, or even check out YouTube. Don't, uh, I would love for you to do that. And you can stay up to date with what's going around the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what is needed for this top left drawer. First off, I'm clicking on my layer, it says number six. So let's bring that up for reference while I go grab number six. Number six is going about right. I'm just taking another peek out about right there. And that's going to be, again, we have to trim it off. I would like for it to have it. I would like to have it so that um, this flower is getting cut off. But notice how the eye is moving is pointing to the hardware. I think that'll be a nice look. So what I'm going to do here is we'll do something like that. And something down here. That'll be my straight cut around the camera to the cutting board. I don't know if you guys can see the cutting board. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just looking for my where my lines were. Find a nice straight edge. These cutting boards are pretty nice. I'm going to go a little long in case I messed it, missed it. So something like that. I'm a little short, but not the end of the world. Okay. So let me pull this out. It's going to be better for me to align to the bottom of the drawer instead of the top because the top will be hidden anyway. So uh, let me just check my hardware. Forgot about that. See if I'm going to be whole covering up anything. I think I'm going to move it a little bit past the hardware. There's no reason for them to overlap. Again, our Photoshop file is just a guide. Okay, pass number one.
So it's been a while since I've done a transfer project, but I thought this, their new transfers were really a nice fit with this dresser. This is a Dixie brand dresser. And um, so far so good. All right, very nice. So I'm gonna take my sponge and just give it a little bit of a wipe down just to make sure it's not I'm looking for anything that might be squirrely, right? Something like that. Perfect. And what I'm gonna do is cut off the excess top so it fits in the corner really well. So I keep those scissors around. Something right there. I've got some scraps left over from previous ones. So, and looking at my illustration, all the drawers on the right have black art. So how about something like that where we can fill these gaps, I think that would work really well. So let me just cut that up. And I'm just going to make this up. Remember the Photoshop thing is just a guide anyway, so no harm done by going that route. I need to cut about right here. I need somebody to come volunteer and be my camera person. <laughs> okay, so that one I cut a little off, but that's okay. Isn't that part of this whole craft process is, is problem solving? And let's cut this down here. Okay, I think that'll work. I think I'll feel good about that addition of the black and white. There's something really nice about this combination of the cherry blossom with the black and white illustration. Just love that contrast. I did think about doing some highlight blending on this drawers, but just the cherry blossom transfer just didn't need it. Take my nice or sharp X-Acto blade. I wanna cut out any of the transfer that's getting on the ridge. Kinda of missed that while ago. I will go back afterwards and top coat this with somewhat of a satin, well, somewhat a satin look. I love how well it takes the top coat. So that looks smashing. We need to look back at our reference. Top left drawer is where we're at now. That is transfer section number two for me. And it's just one. So basically in my composition, it's narrow at the top, wider at the bottom. That's kind of the eye flow that we're going with and echoes on the same side. So we just need to put a number two over here and I can show you if I turn it off and on, there's number two with a little bit of black and white. Okay, and the black and white probably is either one or two, it's two. All right, so we need transfer number two and black and white number two. So I'm just gonna cut where I think this needs to go. So that's the left side. And then we'll just do a quick cut on the bottom right. So something like that. So you, it's nice to do a dry fit first, right? So it fits right in there nicely. And then we'll have the black and white come in. So we're doing something like this, okay? So, and this is gonna finish this up probably tonight. So what I wanna do is make a mark here. This is basically my mark for where to cut the straight line. You can use a marker if you want. I just don't know why I never got one out. Where did my mark go? Okay, and then we just need to cut the other direction. 
So just cut like right there. All right, this will be our last one. I think this will finish up our left side and we'll take a quick recap of how it all looks. Okay, so this is the bonus material, soft pink. So this, if you look at the color card, this is a Dixie Belle color card. This is pink champagne, this is soft pink. So you can see there's a little bit of contrast. Some things you're gonna need is you're going to need a misting bottle, a small craft brush, and then something like a French tip or maybe a one inch brush that allows you to fade it. You do not want to go crazy with water here, okay? But what I'm trying to accomplish is a little bit of a, just a internal vignette shade of pink. And it's gonna really, it should work fantastic. So what we're gonna do, let's start down here where there's not a transfer and we'll work our way across, okay? I've done this many times, so if you've seen a lot of my lives, I use the word shading and this is basically the same idea, but I wanted to show how I was going to do it with um, a transfer. That's a whole nother story when you're starting to bring a transfer in. So can you see that pink in there? I don't want it to be dark. I could probably use, you could use something like tea rose or if this is not dark enough. And what I'm going to do, I think is even kind of fade it off to the middle. So water is important. What did I do with that? Put my French tip. So if you even need to spray it again, but then come back with your French tip and then just soften it. This is just to feather that edge. Notice that again, I went to about halfway. And faded it out. One that allows me Get a little bit of excess water out of there. That allows me to stop about here, and then I can stop. And feel free to use like a rag to wipe off any excess you might have. Just look, you're trying to get rid of any hard edges. That's really what you're trying to do. And I've got a spot that I need to fix right there. So just give it a little bit of a quick rub. I don't want any hard edges, okay? If I mess any of that up, I can touch it up. See, do you see it? That little hint of a highlight of pink? That may make the world a difference. This is more of a, um, an extra intermediate skill, I guess you might say, but all right, so back to my paint. Find where my camera's at, just a touch of paint. Light mist, okay, remember transfers and water are not the best friends, but I'm not really doing too much to it. Just gonna go over it. So this right now is actually going over the transfer. I would recommend that you might consider practicing this. Don't start calling me saying, my transfer's ruined. And you doused it with a bucket of water or didn't. Does that make sense? Just be careful, okay? So practice this. I wouldn't do this on Dixie Bells Live if I hadn't tried it before and know that I sh you know, I'm confident this is gonna work. Now, the reason why there's a technique, in, uh, what I'm trying to say is you could do this before you transfer, but I kind of wanted the paint to be over. What if this was chocolate or a dark color? So sometimes you want, might want the paint over. So you can see in the middle how I don't have any paint. So I purposely faded it out. So that's, this is what I call shading. I think this is going to add a nice, lovely touch. And as I mentioned before, I simulated this on Photoshop just to make sure that I thought it was going to work. I don't want this to be over. Looks like I missed a spot right there. Make sure your paint's good and dry before you do any transfer work. Okay, you don't want to. So let me just flatten that out to the camera. It's going to be nice and subtle. My lights in here can be a little intense and sometimes it's hard to see. What do y'all think of that? I think that's going to really add some nice enhancements to this piece. Um, I would recommend having a wet rag handy. It looks like I went over my edge a little bit, but touch up where you have to. 
Okay, so there's the, um, <clears throat> this is where we are, okay? And I'm excited to see this come together. Uh, I really try to be cautious when I'm doing transfers because not everybody might love it, but I think this one's really gonna make this, as we would call ourselves furniture artists, this would make this a work of art. And because one, I've composed it, I've created it, but if it wasn't for Dixie Bells, great products, we'd be kind of stuck. But I'm looking over here and I really love that pink shading I just did. I can't wait to see how that's gonna help enhance the rest of the piece. So be sure to follow me on social media. Stay tuned. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments or reach out to me later on. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Holler at a friend, let them know to come check this out. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixie Bell content creator. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a super great weekend. Do something awesome. We'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.